Welcome to episode 49, The Truth About Wisdom, part 2, The Fool, The Mocker, and The Simple. Before we get started, I want to ask you to do me a favor and share the show. If you're on Facebook or Twitter, and the topics such as wisdom, the Supreme Court, healthcare in America, or birthright citizenship comes up, please share the topic-specific Truth Quest episode with your debate partner. If you are listening to this on the Apple Podcast app, please take a minute and scroll down and give the podcast a five-star rating. Another way you can help grow the show is to throw a small donation my way at the Truth Quest podcast patronage page. See that this episode's show notes page at truthquest.podbean.com. The easiest way to stay up to date on the podcast is to subscribe to it on iTunes or Google Play Music. It's also available on Stitcher, Spotify, Podbean, and YouTube. Finally, please join the conversation on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash truthquestpodcast. In episode 48, we covered most of the wisdom-related topics presented in the book of Proverbs, including things like planning, knowledge, discernment, correction, seeking advice. In this episode, I'll walk you through King Solomon's insightful explanation of how wisdom is applied, or better yet, not applied, by different types of people, namely the fool, the mocker, and the simple. If you have not already done so, please listen to episode 48. I think it lays the foundation for what is presented in this episode. Chapter 1, verse 22 lays out the three types of people referenced in this episode. Quote, How long will you who are simple love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery and fools hate knowledge? So let's walk through each of these real quick. The simple, these are the the young, the naive, and the gullible or, or inexperienced. They are teachable, however, experience. They are teachable, however, and they're willing to learn, and so therefore there is hope for the simple. Not so for the fool. Their rejection of wisdom is not due to the reasons of the mocker, but through thick-headedness. They are comfortable in their complacency. Now the mockers or scoffer, they are the worst. They are arrogant and jaded. So let's start with the fool. While the book of Proverbs is known as the book of wisdom, there are almost as many verses concerning the fool and foolishness as there are about the wise or wisdom. In order to have a full understanding of wisdom, you must understand the fool, the simple, and the mocker. We all have choices in life. Wisdom or folly. Proverbs encourages us to choose wisdom, but we have free will. As you heard several times in episode 48, fools despise wisdom and instruction. They are unaware of their foolishness, but yet they are comfortable in that place. Verse 7, chapter 1 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. I talk about the concept of fear of the Lord in the last episode, but it is a foundational principle of the book of Proverbs. Wisdom and knowledge come from God. Fear of the Lord really means respect or reverence. Only a fool would turn their back on the giver of knowledge and wisdom. Those who do are rejecting God. Chapter 26 offers a series of analogies describing the fool. I'm going to read you uh, verses 1, 7, 8, 9, and 11. Like snow in summer or rain in harvest, honor is not fitting for the fool. Like the useless legs of one of who is lame is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. Like tying a stone on a sling is the giving of honor to a fool. Like a thorn bush in a drunkard's hand is the proverb in the mouth of a fool. And finally, as a dog returns to its vomit, so fools repeat their folly. These verses tell us tell us not to reward fools with honor. Doing so only tarnishes your reputation because everyone else knows the fool is undeserving. These verses also caution the wise not to waste their wisdom on fools. We are warned not to listen to or take advice from these people. And in an often repeated warning, we are told to be careful with our association with fools. Other verses along these same lines include Verse 7, chapter 14, stay away from a fool, for you will not find knowledge on their lips. Or verse 9, chapter 23, do not speak to fools, for they will scorn your prudent words. See, because fools hate wisdom, you are likely wasting your time trying to speak to them prudently. Boyd Billy summed this proverb up well when he said, wisdom makes foolishness uncomfortable. Verse 9, chapter 29 says, if a wise person goes to court with a fool, the fool rages and scoffs, and there is no peace. So in other words, it's a waste of time for them to get embroiled in a controversy with a fool who will will only mock and deride you. Verse 12, chapter 17 goes so far as to say, Better to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than a fool bent on folly. 
This is a reminder to the reader how dangerous it is to associate with fools. You're better off meeting a mother bear with missing cubs. The behavior of fools makes them stick out like a sore thumb. As opposed to the prudent who are humble, the fool is boastful. They are arrogant, self-centered, and dismissive of others. They often make themselves known by speaking out of turn and interrupting others. Verse 35, chapter 3 says, The wise inherit honor, but fools get only shame. In other words, God honors those who are wise in their dealings with others, but those who are foolish in the dealings with others acquire or earn the disgrace they receive from the community and from the Lord. Verse 2, chapter 15 says, The tongue of the wise adorns knowledge, but the mouth of the fool gushes folly. So the words of the, so the, words of the wise teach and encourage. Those of the fool are the, of no benefit as they spout and gush folly. Verse 2, chapter 18 Fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinions. So the fool has no concern for the opinion of others. He will simply run off at the mouth, as the message translation says. Verse 13, chapter 18 says, To answer before listening, that is folly and shame. As we discussed in the last episode, the wise are slow to speak. They listen carefully first. On the other hand, the fool who thinks he knows everything will speak without listening and may even interrupt rudely. Verse 7, chapter 24 says, Wisdom is too high for fools. In the assembly at the gate, they must not open their mouths. In other words, while we know from other Proverbs that the fool is not shy about speaking his mind, in forums where serious policy is debated and decisions are made, the fool is in way over his head. Given that he lacks wisdom, no one wants to hear from him anyways. No one wants to hear from him anyways. Verse 3, chapter 27, Stone is heavy and sand a burden, but a fool's provocation is heavier than both. In other words, people who purposely annoy and aggravate others cast a bigger burden on their targets than carrying out some physically demanding tasks. Some of the other more colorful descriptions of the fool include verse 22, chapter 27, which explains how even extreme measures are not enough to separate the fool from his foolishness. They can't even be saved from themselves. Quote, Though you grind a fool in a mortar, grinding them like grain with a pestle, you will not remove their folly from them. Verses 23 to 25 of chapter 10 says, A fool finds pleasure in wicked schemes, but a person of understanding delights in wisdom. What the wicked dread will overtake them, what the righteous desire will be granted. When the storm has swept by, the wicked are gone, but the righteous stand firm forever. In other words, the fool finds pleasure in the search for wisdom. They delight in wisdom. Verse 24, chapter 14 says, The wealth of the wise is their crown. But the folly of fools yields folly. Notice the circularity of the phrase, the folly of fools brings folly. Fools get caught up in their own foolishness. It's a cycle. They simply cannot get out of their own way. The accumulation of folly brings more folly. On the other hand, the wise are able to enjoy the benefits brought on by the accumulation of wisdom. Verse 22, chapter 16 continues this theme when it says, Fools bring punishment to fools. So that was Proverbs' depiction of the fool. Now let's turn our attention to the simple or naive. In the book of Proverbs, the simple refers to the youth, the naive, the gullible, or inexperienced. Because they lack wisdom, they do not use common sense or critical thinking. Verse 15, chapter 14 says, The simple believe anything, but the prudent giving, but the prudent give thought to their steps. Verse 22 of chapter 1 asks, How long will you who are simple love your simple ways? Unlike the fool or the mocker discussed next, there is hope for the simple because they are teachable and able to learn from the mistakes of others. Verse 25, chapter 19 says, Flog a mocker and the simple will learn prudence. Rebuke the discerning and they will gain knowledge. Verse 11, chapter 21 says, When a mocker is punished, the simple gain wisdom. By paying attention to the wise, they get knowledge. Verses 23 through 33 of chapter 1 are a direct call and warning to the simple, the fool, and the mocker. They will suffer the consequences and feel the regret of their rejection of wisdom's call. Quote, For the waywardness of the simple will kill them. See, wisdom will not bail them out during their times of trouble. As a matter of fact, wisdom, if it was a person, would laugh at them when they find themselves in trouble. 18 chapter 14 explains that by choosing to remain simple or naive, by choosing to ignore wisdom's calling, these folks will continue to inherit foolishness. 
while the prudent will be rewarded, honored, or crowned with wisdom and knowledge. Proverbs chapter 7 depicts a father looking out the window and watching a naive young man walk into an adulteress's trap. At some point in each of our lives, we have had a similar experience. You observe the behavior of friends or your children, you watch them walking closer to the edge, and you warn them of the consequences. A wise person would never have gone down that road, but the simple and naive will. The chapter ends just as it began with the father's warning to his son to heed his instructions, listen to and internalize the wisdom that he is offering. Doing so will help the son avoid regret and suffering, the unnecessary consequences of poor judgment such as adultery. In verses 1-11 through 11 of chapter 8, wisdom is again personified as a woman calling out in the streets. Wisdom is available to calling out in the streets. Wisdom is available to all of us. Whether you are simple or a fool, you should listen to wisdom and gain knowledge and prudence. Despite the fact that wisdom is widely available, few accept it. In verses 1-6 through 6 of chapter 9, wisdom is calling the simple and naive to her feast so that they can gain wisdom and knowledge. Accepting wisdom is a choice, as is accepting the ways of folly. Quote, wisdom has built her house. She has set up its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set the table. She has sent out her servants, and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who work simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, Come, eat my food, and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways, and you will live. Walk in the way of insight. And of course, my favorite verse from Proverbs, as I mentioned in the last episode, the prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. Because the naive, the naive lack the ability to discern, they run right into troubled situations and suffer the consequences. You see this all the time in life. Someone gets into trouble with drugs, financially or relationally, and those of us viewing it from the outside say, how do they not see this coming? And finally, let's look at the mocker or the scoffer. These are the worst of the worst in the eyes of King Solomon. Much like the fool, mockers or scoffers think they are always right. They are jaded and characterized by excessive pride and arrogance. Verse 22 of chapter 1 asks, How long will mockers delight in mockery and fools hate knowledge? Verse 6, chapter 14 says, The mocker seeks wisdom and finds none, but knowledge comes easily to the discerning. So the mocker's arrogance will not allow them to ingest and apply wisdom, whereas the wise, those who have the gift of discernment, or those who have an open mind, easily obtain, absorb, and apply knowledge. Verse 21, chapter 24, seems to be a, or seems to be a, the definition of the mocker. The proud and arrogant person, the mocker is his name, behaves with insolent fury. No one trusts mockers as they continually stir up trouble. Quote, mockers stir up in a city. But the wise turn away anger. That's from verse 8 of chapter 29. It is better to have leaders who are wise and calm than a group of arrogant cynics who stir up trouble among the populace. Verses 8 and 9 of chapter 24 explains that no one trusts the scoffer or mocker. His reputation precedes him. Whoever plots evil will be known as a schemer. The schemes of the folly are sin. The people detest a mocker. Mockers hate to be corrected or challenged, and they refuse to learn from their mistakes. The difference between the wise and the mocker are laid out in clear terms in verses 7 through 9 of chapter 9. Quote, whoever corrects a mocker invites insults. Whoever rebukes the wicked incurs abuse. Do not rebuke mockers, or they will hate you. Rebuke the wise, and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous, and they will add to their learning. End quote. We have all known mockers who display the characteristics described in those verses. They are always right. They hate to be corrected or challenged. They'll jump down your throat if you dare confront them. Whereas the wise person accepts constructive criticism and uses it to their advantage by learning from it. In the end, just like fools, mockers will suffer. Verses 10 through 12 of chapter 9 makes it clear the source of wisdom via the phrase, quote, fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For through wisdom your days will be many, and the years will be added to your life. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are a mocker, you alone will suffer. Your life will be better with wisdom than without. Years will be added to your life. Wisdom will reward you. The mocker who rejects wisdom will experience nothing nothing but but suffering and have no one to blame but himself. Verses 28 and 29 of chapter 19 are pretty clear about what's in store for the mocker. 
quote, a corrupt witness mocks at justice, and the mouth of the wicked gulps down evil. Penalties are prepared for mockers, and beatings for the backs of fools, end quote. And finally, the only redeeming feature of a mocker is the ability of the simple to learn from their mistakes. As verse 11, chapter 21 points out, quote, when a mocker is punished, the simple gain wisdom. By paying attention to the wise, they get knowledge. So over the last two episodes, if nothing else, they prove that the book of Proverbs is a treasure trove of wisdom and well worth your time reading, studying, and digesting. As I mentioned in the last episode, I am only scratching the surface. If you enjoyed the content of these episodes, check out my book, The Proverbs Project. It's available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and every ebook format imaginable. Check out this episode's show notes page at truthquest.podbean.com or you can Google The Proverbs Project. You can also join the conversation on Facebook where I post a verse from Proverbs each day at facebook.com forward slash Proverbs. And as always, please join the TruthQuest conversation on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash truthquestpodcast.